Okay. <laughs> hey, Grace Corey's here. Hi, Grace. Um, I think I should maybe start over because I just got a, a, an error message. So, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyway, so what I was saying is most of our students want to sing either microphone music or contemporary music theater, which is also BTW microphone music. So when I say microphone music, I mean all stars that are sung into microphones. Uh, meanwhile, we may never have even owned a mic set up. It is possible that you have never owned a mic set up. It is possible that you are not comfortable with microphones or that the only microphones you personally have sung into were just handed to you, right, by some tech or sound engineer. And that you find, it is possible that you find the whole microphone issue a little bit, a little bit intimidating. But the reality of teaching popular styles, and you guys, I'm just saying it like it is, is that the microphone is part of the sound. Literally, that is part of the sound of microphone styles. You can help your students and you can help your students get healthy sounds to come out of their faces and you may even help them learn to stylize a little, do some embellishments or whatever, whatever the genre is that they're working on. But unless they're singing into a microphone regularly, they're not really preparing to perform the music that they love. I'm just saying. The band singer, the singer songwriter, they have to develop an intimacy with the microphone such that they are interacting with it at a very intuitive level in a very immediate way. They do. It's a thing. So, so let me just, here we go. My microphone. Oh, nope, that's not it. There it is. My, my production engineer isn't here today. <laughs> oh, you guys are so, oh, hi, Jeff is here. Hey, Jeff. Um, you're so patient with me. I so appreciate it. Anyway, um, therefore, ergo, thus, you can, <laughs> you can either be part of this process with them or you can just ignore it the way most voice teachers do. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Okay, also friends, you are a singer. And if you are singing anything other than classical music or choral music, you too will be singing into a microphone. And when we all get to go out and perform again, you might be wanting to perform your own self. And that means that you too need to be empowered when you sing into microphones, right? You know, I'm all about empowering you. Um, today we are going to talk about microphones and singing into microphones and how to make a nice, very simple, very cheap home practice and or studio setup. This is, well, studio, uh, not recording studio, voice teaching studio. This is, seriously guys, this is microphone 101, friends. And I have, I will have some guests in the future who are far more qualified than myself. In fact, Jeff Costello offered already might be taking them up on that, uh, to talk about actual gear, like the next level or two up. Today is really just a jumping off place. And if you want my nice little PDF with the links in it that recommends the components of the setup that I'm recommending today that we're going to talk about today, put microphone in the chat. That's why that word is down there. <laughs> The microphone in the chat and the bot will send you a link to get that. So we're going to take a look at this thing called, we're also going to take a look at this thing that people call mic technique. And I'm going to show you how little you actually need to know about that. It really isn't a big deal. Oh, Leanne is here. Hi, Leanne. I'm glad to see you, Leanne. Now, um, okay. There we go. I'm Meredith Colby, and I help voice teachers create confident teaching and singing of contemporary microphone styles. I'm the author of Money Notes, which introduces neurovocal method. 
a way to create healthy singing for microphone music that is based on brain science. You can find me right here on Facebook every Monday or on the replay. You can also find me, just saying, you can find me on the Full Voice podcast. Yes, 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 I have to fluff my feathers for a second here. Or as Michelle Marquardt Dubois would say, shake my sassafras. <laughs> I love that. Some of you know Nikki Loney, and if you don't, you should. She creates incredible music and voice teaching tools for the voice studio. Um, she has this terrific podcast. Oh, if you teach teens and tweens and you don't know about Nikki, you got to look Nikki up because she has great stuff for teens, tweens, and even littles. Uh, she and her husband produced the Full Voice podcast, which is for, for voice teachers, literally a podcast for voice teachers. And I've been listening to the Full Voice for about two years, and I'm a big fan. And she's, I mean, just, it's introduced me to a lot. Oh, Stephanie's here. Hi, Stephanie. Um, she has introduced me to people, to ideas, to techniques. I mean, I'm, I love this podcast and I'm a little fangirly about it. And when she reached out to me to be a guest, I lost my mind. <laughs> I was so like, wait, what? So anyway, I am, uh, that, that episode dropped on Friday. That podcast dropped on Friday. So I hope you'll give it a listen. And if you do... Thank you for the hearts. If you do, please, um, but you know, please reach out to Nikki or me or, or review the podcast on your app because you know what? That stuff helps so much, you guys. You have no idea. It, it helps our businesses, of course, but you know what? It helps our hearts and it reminds us why we do this stuff, right? So big love to Nikki Loney. Mwah, mwah. Here's a, a, there's a link to the podcast on my page where we are currently broadcasting. Anyway. Um, I have to look at the comments here be, and put on my thing. Sharon says, fluff and shake it. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Alexis says, howdy. Hi, Alexis. Okay, now we're going to do this. Where is it? There it is. And speaking of that, please be generous with the hearts and thumbs, you guys. Uh, I appreciate it. And, and also, I love when you appreciate each other. When somebody says something and you guys you know, give that person the hearts and the thumbs. It's really cool. I love that. All right. And there we go. Enough about that. We're going to do it now. We're going to, I'm going to introduce you to my friend. Okay. So first of all, let's just walk through this. I am going to move this here so I can see what I'm doing more. Um, if you have questions while I'm doing this, please put them in the chat. Okay. Because you know what? If you have a question, so does someone else, and it will be good for it to be asked. Now, this is actually the grandfather of the one that I'm going to rec that I'm recommending in the PDF. Uh, the one that I'm recommending in the PDF is this. I love this one, my friend. Um, but I really love the one <laughs> that I'm recommending. I think I'm just going to buy it because I love it, um, and I, I'll I'll walk you through it. It's six and a half pounds. It's really light. Anyway, I'm going to show you this one first, and then I'm going to tell you, show you the other one. Okay, so just so you see kind of the basic. Um, this looks huge. It does look huge, Stephanie. Stephanie just said this looks huge, but it's actually not so huge. Okay, here's my hand. Okay, I know it's hard to tell, but one hand, two hand. Okay, so this one is not so big, but the one in the PDF is even smaller. It's tiny. I just love it. Okay, so here's this. This is the front of it. And here's the back. And I'm just going to walk you through. And if this is if this is under your pay grade, then oh well. Um, we're because I really want to. I want to look at this as though you have never seen one before. Okay. This is the power cord. They have their own special power cords that are grounded. So three prong. Um, and you're going to want a three prong in probably as well. This one has, I'm going to grab my straw to point. Uh, this has also, you can input with a quarter inch. If you have a, a quarter inch microphone, you've seen those, you can do that here. They don't sound as good, but they work. Uh, and this is, a, a, also you can, well, we'll get to this in a second. This is just the volume, plain old volume. Wait, can you guys see this? It doesn't matter. 
And these are two equalizer buttons. We're going to look at those in the pictures, so don't worry. Now, these sometimes are intimidating to people. They look at them and they go, oh, I don't really know what they mean and blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing with these, and I'm going to show it to you in the picture as well. These are, how can I say? These are like the seasonings of your sound. They're going to change based on your voice, based on your preference, based on the, mo the room that you're in. So these are fine. You can do whatever you want with those. You can't hurt them. It's, it's you talking into the microphone and spinning these and seeing what sounds good to you or, or another set of ears. I mean, a lot of times people will ask somebody else because it's hard to hear when you're singing properly. Um, right. So these, these are harmless and they will help you get the feel and the sound that you want from your microphone setup. This can be used. So, all right. So that's just the regular old volume, regular old volume, regular old on and off power and microphone. Now I'm going to plug the microphone into the back. Okay. Microphones have special cords. They're called XLR cords. And you can see there's a male and a female. So this is asking for the male. Oh, sorry, the female. <laughs> I have to tell you I'm a little nervous because I know Jeff Costello is watching me. So we're going to plug that in there. Then we're going to take our microphone. This is the SM58. It is an industry standard dynamic microphone. And I want to show I'll show, I'm a, okay, I was going to wait for this five to show you this. Here's what happens to SM58s. <laughs> because, because they literally, <laughs> that's, that's, this microphone has, has 100,000 miles on it. Um, but it still works. That's the cool thing. Okay, but I'm going to use the prettier one today. Whoops, I did this wrong. So, I, okay, I was right. I did the wrong end. Hold on. Okay, let's take this off. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, one more time. See, I told you I was nervous because Jeff Costello's watching. All right, here we go. <laughs> so we're, we're plugging these XLR things into our microphone. There we go, okay. We're gonna make sure our power is on. There's our power on. We know that because the lights lit up. We're going to put our, our all of our levels just at 12 o'clock because that's a good starting spot. <laughs> Stephanie says my microphone is well loved. And Jeff Costello says that the microphone, he has one that looks just like that. <laughs> so, all right, so now we, we turn it around. Now, I want to tell you that this, my, this, speaker is actually a speaker slash monitor and in a performance situation you would use this as a monitor and you would love it because you can the one that i'm recommending not so much this one you can put it on a microphone stand and have it at face height or just below face height so you can hear maybe just yourself not you and two other singers coming out of the same <laughs> monitor. You could hear just yourself, which is amazing and right really close to yourself. So that's huge. I just have to tell you. And um, so that's in a performance situation. You would use this as a monitor in your studio, unless you have a ridiculously huge studio, this is a really nice size for a room so that you or your students can practice singing on the microphone. And see, it changes when, I, when I'm talking on the microphone. So there we are. Let me see. That's the setup. Let me see. Okay. So now I want to show you the one that I'm recommending that I keep referring to that I think is a lot better. And then we're going to get to the microphone itself. Okay. Oh, what the heck? I'll just put it down here. All right. So here is the front. This is the one I'm recommending. This is the front of it. And you can see it's it's a different configuration. I'm going to come over here and peek. Uh, you can see it's a different configuration, and you can see that all the knobs are on the front. How smart is that? So you can actually <laughs> like look at what's happening. 
So that's, and I'm going to show you the, the controls right now. There they are. Okay, now these controls, you can see that there are three levels of EQ on this one, unlike my grandfather one, which only has two. And again, they're really, they're just, they're, they're personal. Yeah, front knobs, Stephanie says. They are, they're personal preference. You, you dink around with those and you find what works for your voice, for the room, for the style of music, whatever. There's the main level, which is just how loud is it? Now, here's what I love. Well, oh, I also want to point this out to you. These are preamps. And I'm going to tell you that a preamp, when you have a microphone like this, a preamp is a really nice thing because this dynamic microphone, and this is the kind of microphone you would bring to a, a, any kind of live situation and the kind that your students should be practicing on. These are not powered in any way. They get, the only power comes from the speaker. So the preamp boosts that electrical signal from the microphone to the speaker. So we like that. We like that uh, signal boost. Um, oh, here's what I want to show you. I don't know if can, you guys can see my pointer or not. So I'm going to assume you cannot. But if you see the main level knob there, right underneath it, is um, f a thing for an input for a, a memory stick. One, you know, like a, like a, huh, one of these, right? So if you have custom tracks, if you, I don't know, for whatever reason you might want to use this with, if you have a gig and you're going to go on break and you don't trust your Spotify playlist for some reason, you can just put your playlist on a memory stick and put it in there. Alternatively, if you look just to the, other, the side of that, there is a little blue light. That's the Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth uh, feature on this microphone or this thing, which I love because in as you, well, you already know, you're teaching online, right? So Bluetooth is huge. We use it all the time. Uh, they can have their, you can have your backing tracks coming from YouTube, for instance, or well, I don't know, whatever, wherever your backing tracks are coming from, or you're or downloaded onto your phone. And the speaker hears those and you can then sing. So the mix happens in this, in the thing. Here we go. Sorry. And here's the back of this one and you can see this is much more simple it has the the preamp the level it there's um where the microphone goes and where the power cord goes and the on and off button so you you only need to interact with that once you plug it in you plug your mic in you turn it on boom spin it around and it is on a microphone i'm over here again it is on a microphone stand uh, this is a speaker stand. Another thing that is not as good of this grandfather one as that baby one. That baby one goes on a microphone stand. So lighter to carry, smaller footprint, better. Just a better thing. Okay, now, <laughs> now we're going to move on to the microphone itself. And we've already sort of, already sort of looked at that. And I already talked about that. This is a dynamic microphone. You may see, especially if you have already purchased a microphone for your teaching setup for Zoom or something, you may see that there is such a thing as a condenser microphone. And sometimes the, uh, the condenser microphone will be put out there as being superior. And it's arguably it is superior, but that's not the point. The point is that a, a condenser microphone is powered for one thing and for another thing it tends it's, the application is more for a recording studio it's your <laughs> you would never want your condenser microphone to end up looking like this <laughs> okay so so it's a this is a dynamic microphone and this is what you want because as a singer this is what you're going to learn to interact with right and and on the pdf the download that you can get if you put microphone in the chat there are, I give two choices for microphones, the SM58, of course, which is again, industry standard. And then another really nice one that was also, that is good and inexpensive.
microphone. Are we good with that? Yes, we are. Okay. And then the next thing is, there it is. See, I wrote it down. <laughs> and I forgot that I wrote it down. I want to see if Jeff has added anything to this, this chat. Um, oh, Stephanie says, do those knobs affect reverb at all? Okay. This, this does not have reverb. The other one also does not have reverb. You can get monitor, well, no. You can get speakers that have some reverb built into them. You can get those. Uh, my husband and I use outboard little, they're very small uh, outboard effects, right? It's a box, it's about, uh, too bad I don't have that. Thank you for asking, I'm sorry about that. But it's a little box, it's this fat, it's, you know, four by six or smaller. Uh, it doesn't weigh very much, it doesn't cost very much, but you can um, make the microphone go from itself to this through the box, and then you can have some effects on that, some delay, some reverb. I forgot what the other one is, because those are the only ones I use. <laughs> so so yeah, with these, there is there are not any f effects on it. You would have to add the effects to that. Thank you for asking that. And, okay, so, nobody's asking questions except that one. Okay, I'm moving on, but I can always come back. <laughs> I can come back if you guys need me to for, with any questions. And, okay, Stephanie got that, good. Oh, Grace, I see something from Grace. So, let me quick, I'm going to pull Grace's comment down here so we can all see it. She says, once we're back in the studio with voice students, can they connect their phones via Bluetooth to play back their own accompaniment? Yes. Yes. I, I know. <laughs> That's what I think is really cool, that you, they can just bring in their own backing tracks on their phone, and the, the speaker will hear them, the monitor. I keep pausing before I say speaker or monitor because it's a... It is a monitor technically, but in my voice studio, I use it as a speaker. So yes, Grace says that's cool. It is cool, isn't it? All right, so let's talk for a second about mic technique. Show of hands, anybody intimidated by the term mic technique? <laughs> uh, I've, I've talked to many voice teachers like, why is there a technique to this? But there is, there, uh, uh, but it's very small and you don't need to know very much. Here's what you need to know. Well, kind of two things. You need to know that low frequencies, I'm checking my list to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, all right. Low frequencies don't travel as far or as fast as high frequencies. That's what you need to know. So what that means is that when you want to be soft or you want to be, when you want, <laughs> when you this is what I'm talking about with the intuitive relationship with the microphone. <laughs> so the intuitive relationship with the microphone says Sharon has something to say, but I, she's, oh, maybe she's saying bye. I'm not sure. When you, when the microphone is close, it hears the low frequencies of your voice. And then as it goes farther away, it hears fewer of those. I'm going to make it a little hotter so you can hear. Whoop. As it as it as you pull it away, it hears fewer and fewer of those lower frequencies that you have in your voice. Here we go, and then here. <laughs> um, that's so. That is the thing that you really want your singers to get the feel for: is what do I get for how much of a distance? And the distance isn't very much, you guys, because. If you're if you're doing something quiet, um, when it rains, it pours, but you didn't even notice. So you're here. You're, I'm just whispering, right? I'm whispering, but my lips are literally touching the microphone. But if I'm if I'm wanting to be a little louder, I don't know. Rain blows. I don't want to be rain. I don't really want that unless 
unless I'm a rock singer or a metal singer, in which case I might be really loud and have my lips on the microphone because part of the sound of that genre is to overblow the diaphragm of the microphone. That's what happens. Now, do you need to explain that to your metal student? No, you do not because they know that, they intuit that. When they are holding the microphone close to themselves and they'll also do this to it, they'll cup it, which drives <laughs> drives sound engineers crazy, but, <laughs> but they do that. They cup it and they bring it really close to their mouths and they overblow the diaphragm. It's part of the sound. Uh, Stephanie says, could you use this monitor as the only speaker for a small recital or would we need another? If it's not a big room, you could absolutely. So I have not used this as, for a recital because I get a little picky about the sound because all my singers are microphone singers. Um, but I have used it when I've done public, you know, speaking, public speaking things or training for a seminar where it's just me talking. And I've been in fairly big rooms with just this and it's been fine. So it kind of depends on the room. If the room has a lot of soft material in it, if it's, if it's carpeted or has those sound tiles on the ceiling, I would think this would not be enough. But if it was a room that was fairly live and or not huge, I think you could probably use just this. I, yeah, I mean, you'd have to check, but I think you probably could. So low frequencies, high frequencies, close, far. And also, I want to point something out to you. Suzanne says, hi, Meredith, your thoughts on compression. Ah, okay. I'm going to get to that. Let me get, let me, I'm going to get to the compression thing in a second. The other thing that microphones do is that they add an element of uh, dynamic to what you are doing. So for instance, you will see uh, any kind of emo singer, like a rock singer or, or a ballad singer. And if they want to diminish their volume, but they don't want to fall into a vibrato, okay? So they want the diminuendo to occur, but they want to keep the straight tone. What they'll do is they'll just pull the microphone away from their mouth. They'll say, and you, they're done. Because when it's this far away, when it's that far away, that's, that's it. It's not hearing you anymore. Oh, that's the other thing. So sometimes you will see the singers sort of pulling the microphone like this, like very dramatically, jazz singers in particular. And so that does that is not microphone technique. That is a performance technique. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna stop talking in this. That is a performance technique. It it looks kind of cool, but honestly, once the microphone is about 10 inches from your mouth, it's not hearing you anymore anyway. So all this, you know, pulling it arm distance away is not a microphone technique. <laughs> okay, so compression. Um, compression, for those of you who do not know what compression is, it's uh, a way to, it's, it squishes your voice. And most of the recordings that you hear involve, when I, and when I say most, I mean all, of the recordings you hear that are not classical or choral, even choral recordings have compression on them, they're going to have some compression on, it sort of shaves off the really high and low uh, especially high frequencies and, um, and volume. So it's really handy. It depends on the kind of singer you are. If it, usually in live situations, compression is used either not at all or in moderation, but live situations usually have horrible sound. <laughs> I'm just saying, they usually do. Not always, um, but if they have good sound, it probably means there's an actual sound engineer there and the actual sound engineer has a compressor or five that they are using. Um, for compression in your own studio, probably not necessary unless you are in a particularly large room. I mean, if you're teaching voice lessons, you know, on a church DS or something, then dais. What are they called? You know, the thing, the stage of the church. Says the minister's daughter. Yes, I'm a minister's daughter, and I don't know the name of that stage. Um, 
then yeah, you might want to consider a compressor, but just for everyday use for your studio or to use it as a, as a monitor when you perform, probably not necessary, optional. You can get it if you want. Oh, and so Stephanie says, I'm thinking with my uke and voice, it might work. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Big enough, yes. When you're holding the mic, does it matter if it's directly in front of your mouth or just below your chin? <gasps> Thank you for asking that, Stephanie. It matters a lot. Um, <laughs> so these dynamic microphones. Um, okay, I'll just I'll just say ah, and let's watch what happens, shall we? Ah. See, it's that low frequency thing again. If you want the microphone to hear your low frequencies, you have to have the microphone look right at your mouth. And the closer it is to your mouth, the better. And I know my I've had students who are in cabaret and the cabaret coaches have told them to hold their microphone down here because people want to see your your face when you when you are singing a cabaret song, when you are a cabaret singer. And I I I just don't know what to say about that. I think Yes, they're right. As audience members, we do want to see your face if you're a cabaret singer. Um, but it doesn't sound as good. We also came to hear really good singing. And the microphone, as you just heard, it doesn't register that very well at all. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I guess that's just a personal call. It's just a... I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And there's there's me writing down what I just said, <laughs> what you need to know. <laughs> um, and you know what? That's it. Mike's 101. Super easy, you guys. This is not intimidating. You can do it. You can do it. Um, get, get the PDF. If you're already on my mailing list, you can just reply to my email that I sent you this morning and I will send it directly to you. If you're not on my mailing list, it will, it will put you on my mailing list and you'll get that PDF. And it's a really nice little cheap setup. It's like 200 bucks for the whole, no, okay, two, less than $250 for a whole setup. It's really nice. You will like it. You will use it. Have a great week. Bye.